unbiased trading here and today we're going over machine learning and trading part two be sure to check out part one that goes over more the models and how to get started with machine learning whereas this is mainly on training uh walk forward kind of testing back testing uh, and deployment and overall conclusions now for training for a little summary of what training is after the model has been selected the next step is to train it on historical data um, this can be done if you're looking for a supervised model. This could be done by feeding it corresponding labels for buy and sell signals, and then the model would learn how to predict those labels based off the input. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to be flipping from supervised and unsupervised simply because I think they both uh, work in trading. However, unsupervised might be more useful depending on the topic. Now, the first step is to split the data into a training set and a test set. Um, the training set is used to train the model, while the test set is used to evaluate the model's performance. It is important to make sure that the data is split randomly and the training set is large enough to ensure the model has sufficient data to learn from. Now, some of you may notice, if you've been following me on Twitter, this is pretty much what walk-forward testing is, and a lot of machine learning is based on that kind of theory. So um, you'll see a lot of similarities. Now, before training the model, the data uh, may need to be pre-processed. This can include cleaning the data, normalizing the data, and hand handling missing values. Pre-processing helps to ensure that the data is in the format that the model can work with and also improves the performance of the model, e.g. rubbish in, rubbish out. Once the data is ready, the next step is to define the model architecture. This includes selecting the appropriate model as shown in the last video about machine learning and all those different types of models you could use. For a quick example would be neural networks and random forest, but there are more. Um, also a part of this is specifying the number of lay um, layers in your model and the number of neurons per uh, layer. The architecture should be chosen based on the specific task and the characteristics of the data and overall the purpose for the model to spit out, e.g. are you doing supervised or unsupervised. Um, very vague, but there is more to it on that. Now, after the architecture has been defined, the model can be trained using the training set. This is done by passing the data through the model and adjusting the model parameters to minimize the error uh, errors between the predicted labels and the true labels if you were going through a supervised model. This process is known as optimization, and there are several optimization algorithms such as gradient descent, Adam, and so on. Now, this does sound rather compli complicated, and to be honest, it kind of is, but once done a couple times, it can be easier to wrap your head around. To give a quick recap and a brief example, if we wanted to um, forecast end-of-day volume, I would recommend doing an unsupervised model. Since we just want to see the patterns of how end of day volume can be predicted and how much data is required to predict end of day volume accurately. In this situation, we may experiment with different data sets to train it on, such as maybe we'll only do pre market volume, maybe we'll do volume until 10 a.m., and so on. The model would uh, next be run on unseen data to evaluate how accurate it is at predicting end of day, end of day volume. Now, I hope this clarifies uh, things a little for you on this kind of section. I know there's a lot of information here, so feel free to reach out to me if you're ever confused. Um, I'm not by any means a complete expert in machine learning, but I have been doing it now for a, a small a small while, um, and I just want to share my experience with you. Now, backtesting and optimization. Machine learning, uh, a machine learning model fine-tuning is the process of modifying its parameters to improve its performance on the test set. There are several key ways for fine-tuning a model, including um, hyperparameter tuning. This involves adjusting the model's hyperparameters, such as the learning rate, the number of layers, the number of neurons in each layer, um, and hyperparameter tuning can be done manually by trial and error, or it can be uh, you can use other techniques such as grid search or random search. These methods systematically test different combination of hyperparameters and select the combination that gives the best performance. Next is feature selection. So this process involves selecting a subset of features from the data that are most relevant to the task. This can be done by um, using techniques such as uh, RFE, um, select K best or lasso. These methods can help reduce the dimensionality of the data and improve the model's performance. Uh, lastly is regularization uh, is a technique used to prevent overfitting by adding a penalty term to the cost um, function that penalizes large weights. So common forms of this is normally an L1 and L2. Um, if you do want to research that, be sure to just Google it and you can find out more about it. Um, but yeah. Now it is critical to remember that fine-tuning a model can be difficult, um, be a difficult balancing act between boosting performance and avoiding overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting happens when a model is overly complicated and performs well on training data, but badly on new general data. 
Um, underfitting happens when a model is overly simplistic and fails to grasp any pattern in any type of data, whether that be unseen or um, training data. Now, what are some signs you can look for in case it is being overfit or underfit? Now, for overfitting, the model performs maybe too well on training data, but poorly on the new test data. Also, if the model is too complex with a high number of parameters slash degrees of freedom, if you don't know what degrees of freedom are, they're pretty much just variables. Um, I did a Twitter thread about them and uh, it, it was perceived quite well, so I'm, I'm happy to see that's helped people. Now, the model also, if it's memorizing the training data instead of generalizing to the new data, this is normally a key sign as well for overfitting. Now, for signs of underfitting, if a model is performing badly on the training data and unseen data, that's just clearly underfitting um, the easiest one to see. Next one is if the model is too simple. So maybe if you don't have enough um, parameters or degrees of freedom. And lastly, if it's not able to catch uh, the underlying patterns in the data that even, you know, the, the pretty basic patterns, if it can't find anything, then it could be um, either part of your data or it could be underfitting. Now, lastly, plotting the learning curve, which depicts the model's performance on the training and test sets um, as a function of the number of training samples can assist identify overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting models will have a significant gap between the training and test sets, whereas underfitting models have a small gap between the two sets and a poor score on both. Now, deployment. So you've gone through the whole machine learning process. You've got a strategy or something you want to deploy onto the market. Um, and you, you've also compared it to other models to see how it performs um, with other machine learning models. Now, it can be deployed in a various number of ways. Uh, you'll need to deploy it first to a platform. Um, then you will want to set up necessary, necessary parameters, also risk management uh, rules and position sizing. Now, this may appear to be pretty simple um, once I put it like that, but it truly does rely on your platform you choose and the market. Setting up an algo in uh, DAS, for example, is far more complicated than setting up an algo in NinjaTrader for futures markets. Um, and this is where opportunity cost and capability come into play in determining wh whether you can fully implement an algorithm. Now, it may be quite costly to make a mistake in your algo's logical code. Thus, I always recommend why, uh, when, and especially when I take client system live, uh, we perform a test on a SIM account for at least two months, depending on the platform used. If it is you know, a futures market, then I may do only a month because most of the time NinjaTrader is great with execution and um, it handles a lot of errors. Now, some platforms um, I would recommend is NinjaTrader, CoinConnect if you are looking for cryptocurrencies, and sadly, I would say DAS is the best one I'm aware of for small caps. Um, but I've also heard TradeStation has some good features, although I've never tested it myself. So be sure to research that if you want to look into TradeStation. Now, is this whole thing worth it? Uh, machine learning can definitely be, in my opinion, the alternative slash accelerant to intuition and time in the market for spotting patterns and gaining an edge because it allows the automated analysis of vast amounts of data. This can be especially useful in the context of trading where the sheer volume of data can be overwhelming for humans to process and analyze, causing most traders to take three years to be successful. Now, this isn't simply three years because they don't have an edge. I know there are other reasons such as psychology, for example, and execution. However, I do say a big part of it is just finding edge in itself. Now, discretionary traders rely on intuition, experience, uh, fundamental and technical analysis to make trading decisions. However, these methods can be time consuming. They may not always be very accurate and they may not give you a complete picture of the market over a long enough period of time. Additionally, human intuition is prone to biases and errors, which can lead to poor trading decisions. Whereas machine learning models, on the other hand, can evaluate enormous volumes of data and uncover patterns that humans may miss. If the correct data is available, then this can contain patterns in a wide range of trading topics. Machine learning models can also be trained to recognize patterns in real-time data, which then can be used to anticipate future market movements with the ability to accurately quantify the model's accuracy, unlike humans. And for me, that is a really big part of why I prefer systematic trading is that I can actually see the accuracy over a certain period of time um, of what this um, pattern or edge is. Whereas when you're training discretionary, you're simply taking it on a recency bias most of the time, um, and you're just reinforcing things that work for you. Um, which is what machine learning is. You know, machine learning is based off our learning process. It's just accelerated. So to some extent, I do argue that you could use machine learning to just accelerate your intuition and, you know, don't have to spend as long um, at the screens, at least trading or watching the market, whereas you could be doing it through machine learning. 
Now, however, I would suggest that for someone to get into machine learning and to use it well in trading, they need to have been trading discretionary for at least a year. Um, as I previously stated, the first year of overall backtesting is spent learning and discovering things in the market that you might want to explore. Without this, you're just a lost chicken in a very large field of data. Um, and I think this is key. Uh, I have talked to some people that have a very good background in um, statistics and machine learning, for example, but they come into trading and they think they can do that straight away. If you don't have ideas and you, if you don't, you know, if you haven't spent the time actually watching the market, you're going to be quite limited with your ideas and imagination um, to actually what things to test. Um, and, you know, a machine learning model can't tell you what to test. You have to do that yourself. Um, so I think that is definitely a key part uh, of this. Now, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please like and share uh, share it with anyone else who might be interested. Also, I'm running a free call recently, uh, and I was very lucky enough to get shouted out by Tim Gritani. So if you do want to join that free call, um, it is just in the link in the description.